In this video, we're going to use the forward Euler method to solve uh, an ODE, uh, an ordinary differential equation, using MATLAB. So we'll start a new script here and maybe save it as uh, Euler.m. So MATLAB files will end with a, a dot .m there. Uh, so in order to get started, we should remind ourselves of some of the notation we're going to use, which can be helpful to uh, anybody else reading our code, in particular maybe us in the future could be reading the code. So let's say uh, this is a code to solve the uh, ODE. Uh, it's really going to be an initial value problem, but y prime is equal to f of t comma y. And uh, y of t0, maybe we can write t0 here, y of t0 equals some y0. Okay, uh, and then we'll say using the forward Euler method. Okay, so the forward Euler method, as we already discussed, uh, uses a time step. So we should set a particular time step, and we can just pick what that could be. For, for instance, uh, maybe we'll go 0 0.01, although we could use many different values here, and we'll explore what happens when we use some different values. We also need a final time and an initial time. So let's say that maybe our initial time, we can call t0, uh, that can just be zero. And our final time, which maybe we could call tf, can be, let's say we'll go out to time five. So let's say f equals, and now we're gonna define what the function we're going to solve is. So we could have many different functions here. Uh, what we need to do though is tell it the variables and this looks a little bit funny you might think it looks like something like f of t comma y equals uh, some function but the way matlab stores variables at least for these symbolic type functions is to put an at symbol here and then put in your variable so that's telling matlab what the variables you're going to use are uh, and here let's just try something like uh, negative y uh, sorry negative t times uh, y squared so this is a nice uh, nonlinear ordinary differential equation, non-autonomous because it has a t variable there. Uh, and, uh, but it, it is a separable ODE. So this is something that we could solve uh, exactly. So what Euler's method is gonna do is loop us through uh, various times until we have um, gone far enough. Let's write a for loop. So this will just be something which will loop us through our forward Euler method. Uh, four, and then we'll say something like n uh, equals one up to, but if we think about it here, we need to know how many time steps we're going to be taking, right? So there's different ways you could, you could compute this. Uh, for now, let's do something uh, nice and easy. So let's call it something like uh, number of time steps. Num time steps. We could do something like uh, 5 divided by 0 0.01. But this is what's called hard coding. Now we're writing this directly into the code. It's kind of nice, we've stored our variables up here. The, the variables that a user might want to change uh, are sort of in, this, in these first few lines. And then this variable is going to depend on those. So it's a little bit nicer to, to think about, uh, to, to write it in this way. We could do the length of the time interval. So that should be uh, t final time minus initial time. Uh, and then we can divide that by uh, our, our time step. So this almost looks good. Uh, the only issue is that we are going to, uh, th th this, this could potentially not be an integer, especially for different choices of our, of our DT. So here we might wanna put something like floor, which will round down, or you could also use ceiling, uh, which is a C-E-I-L. Uh, to round up. So we'll say for n equals 1 up to the number of time steps. Now we're going to loop through this. We could also do this with a while loop, by the way, but I think it's a little bit more straightforward just to do it with the, the time steps as we go. Okay, so now uh, we want to do our forward Euler time step. Uh, and maybe we can remind ourselves up here of what the forward Euler method looks like, right? So the forward Euler method looks, in our notation right now, looks something like this. Uh, y at the next step is y at the current step 
plus the dt, the time step, times f at t n, the t came first, and then y n. We could even you reuse this in our time stepping just to, to see how this goes. So if we run the, the code, let's take a look at what happens. Already, it says right away, we have an unrecognized variable, y, and it says where the error is. It's in line 16, right? Right here, it tries to understand what this yn is, or maybe this yn, uh, and it doesn't actually know what our, our y is, right? n starts at 1, and then it's going to increase. So we should see what happens. Uh, so if we do something like this, right? It needs to know at least what y1 is, because then we could figure out what the next variable is. We'll need to put in our initial data. So let's maybe say that uh, y0 is 1. And let's remind ourselves that this is the initial data. And we can put some other reminders in here. This is the time step. This is the initial time. This is the final time. Uh, and this is the uh, right-hand side function. Um, OK, so this is nice. Now y1 is equal to y0. And we could have just said y1 is equal to 1, but it's kind of nice to put our y0 equal to 1 up here. That Again, that way all of our input variables are kind of stored at the beginning. Um, so let's even tell ourselves that. So maybe we can say dependent variables. Down here, we can put this, we can call this our time loop. OK, great. And maybe up here, we'll call these the input variables to make it a little more clear to the user what's going on. Great. So now we've got independent variables, dependent variables, and our time loop. Uh, this y1 is, is declared. Now let's see what happens when we hit run. Uh, and again, we've got an unrecognized variable, t. So t needs to march along in time. And you could do this a whole bunch of different ways, but I'll do it in the way that maybe make, looks closest to what you see in a textbook. So we need to, again, initialize uh, our t variable. Uh, and let's call that uh, t0 right there. And down here, we can say uh, t n plus 1. So how, how does t update? You just add dt to get to the next stage, right? Uh, if we do it this way, it's technically not wrong, but it's sort of like we're updating the time before we before we update the, the code. So let's put this down below. I think it looks a little bit cleaner to have it, to, to do the time update after you've you've done some, uh, some step along the way. If we run this, right? We get something that runs. We don't get an error anymore, uh, but we get a whole bunch of outputs. And maybe you can spot why that is, right? We don't have a semicolon right here. So there we've got a semicolon. OK, so now let's see what happens. We run, and nothing happens, right? We, we don't get any output. At least nothing seems to happen uh, in the, the code itself. OK, uh, but what's happened along the way is we've accumulated all of these y values as we went, right? So, so this is kind of nice. Uh, let's see if we can see the result. So let's plot t comma y. If we hit plot, then our figure has appeared, and we see this nice curve. Now, is this correct? We should check this, right? So in the next video, we'll check about how to compute the, the, the error. Now, there's just a couple little things we can do to make this code a little bit nicer. Um, so uh, first, uh, one, of the thing, one of the things we can see on the right, if I hover over this, uh, if, if we look at this bar on the right-hand side, we have a green box up there. And if I hover over it, it says, the variable t appears to change size on every loop iteration within a script. Uh, and there's a similar warning here about the variable y. And what's happening there is when MATLAB goes through, uh, MATLAB doesn't ask how long the variable, uh, how, how long this, this vector needs to be, right? So what we can do is uh, pre-allocate that. That means we should, we should define what this thing is uh, before using it. So if we say something like y equals zeros, and then 
uh, say it should be one up to the number of time steps. Uh, and t should be the same kind of thing. So what this does, it's, it's kind of got placeholders for all of these as we go along. If you don't do that, then what MATLAB does is every time it needs to make the size of the vector larger, it's going to copy it, oh, it's going to create a new vector and copy your old values over. And it does that a whole bunch of times, uh, which can really slow down the code. If we pre-allocate like this, then that vector is already the right length. Uh, if we take a look though, right, number of time steps is 500 here, right? So if we maybe run this, we see up here, we can look on the right, the number of time steps is 500. Uh, and that means our vector is size 500. And if you think, if you look down here a little bit, we're actually going a little bit too far. We've taken one fewer, one more step than we really need to. And that's because we're putting in an n plus one here. So it, it kind of computes that very last time. So one thing we could do, uh, one, there are many ways around this, but a quick way to do it is just to subtract one from the, the number of time steps so you don't do that last, that very last step here. Okay, so uh, if we put a, a semicolon here, we put a plot, uh, we've got a reasonable looking code. Uh, if we run this thing, there is the figure uh, showing up, but it's kind of annoying how it keeps showing up in the background. One way I like to get around this uh, is just to type close all. That way your figure will always show up. Uh, this, this closes all windows and then anytime MATLAB needs to generate new windows it will pop them up front. Let's take a look at what happens. So Y starts off with, right, it's, it's uh, initialized to 500 different points. We've got uh, one showing up in the first, that's, that's from this initialization. And then if we hit continue, this will run through the breakpoint, uh, will run past the breakpoint through the loop again and stop when it hits the breakpoint a second time. So we can do continue. And now we see that y is, has gotten a little bit larger, right? One, and then it turns out for this particular uh, iteration, then the next value is one. But if we continue, um, we see we start getting some different values, right? We can continue a few times and see y as it grows, uh, as, it, as it propagates through this, through this list. Okay.